them again. We didn't talk about the last step. It's, it's a first is my stance, right? So I take it right hand on, try to step back, shoulder width, forward into the targets. Knock, draw hand set, bow hand set, free draw, draw, anchor, aim in with the side window, tip the air, shot setup, slight squeeze to the rear, release, bottle throw and reflect. Bottle throw and reflect is nothing more than like I talk about baseball or Basketball, man, that shot felt good. That was a good shot. Man. Okay, that's your fault. You know if it's a bad shot. I've been able to shoot a bow and say, oh man, that's going to be way left. That's going to be way right. What do I cognitively, what do I need to do to correct that? And that's your fault. to reflect on the shot. Any questions on those 11 steps to archery success? You say, y'all don't know the 11 steps. Oh, it's test. I'm not my Okay. One thing I've got to cover these targets right here. Are, are tournament targets, our state tournament targets. I get those from Bernie Morrell, the Morrell targets. He donates those targets to us every year, okay? I use them because the targets we initially bought for these programs are just beat up. Uh, again, state farming, um, I probably shouldn't say that. Okay. I can't go to these because they have targets on, on the uh, back side as well. But the targets we get for the program are blank on the back side. There's no target. So when you start this program, the kid should shoot the blank side of the target. Reason being, so when you come up here and you start your range, they don't see any kind of bullseye or concentric rings. All they see is a blank target. Okay? The reason being, you want those kids to concentrate on the dynamics of shooting. Okay? Not worry about hitting the ball, not worry about competition with the next guy. Strictly dynamics and grouping arrows. Once they get good enough, they're proficient with the bow, they're proficient with the range, and you feel that they can put a round on target, like a turn or a release on competition, games, or something. We'll talk about some games you can play. Anyhow, that's, that's an important step. I forgot to mention that you don't have a target here. Uh, keep in mind that is uh, uh, you know, a fundamental of this program because I'm shooting black targets to start out with. Any questions? All right. Eleven steps to archer success. Number one is what? Stats. Number oh, two? No. Uh, three. Oh, no. Five. Pre -drop. Pre -drop. Six. Drop. Seven. What's that name? What's that name? Point of finger to the corner of the finger. Put the finger. Put the finger. Put the finger. So after anchor is aim. where do you aim? How do you aim with the silent? All the tip of the air. Next yeah. step. Shot set up. And shot set up. Again, guys, I can't that's the most important. You have to have that shot set up. Any kind of follow through and any kind of consistency. That's probably the biggest step you're going to coach. A correct thing. People, it's just not natural. It wasn't natural for me. When I learned this program, I had all kind of bad habits. Right? I've, been, I've been an archer for about 15 years, roughly. When I started this program, of course, I had to learn to shoot. I had to learn to shoot. And man, that, that, that shot so that release, I found myself doing it. You know, it was really hard to break, and I just had to make a real conscious of it. Start that squeeze to the root. Right? So, your next step being, of course, release. And then finally, it is. And by the way, guys, you have one of these guys in your pack. So uh, when you get out and coach you, and I've had, you know, again, there's three levels of instructors here. Y'all will be VAI certified. I'm a VAITS. There's a tier in between called VAIT. This is called your instructor trainer, which can train the VAIs. Then this is called your instructor trainer specialist, which can train the trainers to train them. So, uh, that being said, I'm a VAITS and a student. Okay, so it's a good pocket guy, good reference. You know, once you train your kids up on this, you have to go on the coach. And range almost runs itself. Uh, okay, now I'm going to get everybody behind the way.
What I want to do next is what you're going to do with your students. And it's called, uh, this block of structure is called Demonstrate the Shot. So what you're going to do is, uh, and I'm going to go through it, but basically you're going to demonstrate how the range runs for your students. Okay? And they ask what you to do it. So, you know, pretty much like this. What, what happens is, again, the block of structure, demonstrate the first shot. You're going to run through just like you want the range run, just like you want your students to do. So you start out with the introduction, something like this. Uh, good afternoon, guys. My name is John. I'm an education biologist from Louisiana Department of Wildlife Issues today. I'm going to teach you international study style of archery. Uh, I have a couple range safety rules. First, no running on the range. Two, the no dry fire rule. Dry fire is nothing more than drawing this bow in a manner that you're not ready to shoot and releasing it. Why is that? Uh, without an arrow. That's important because you can hurt yourself or hurt the archers around you. <clears throat> and lastly, the emergency whistle blast. It's it's a, a blast, a five or more a consecutive blast, and that means that there's a problem on the range. If you hear that whistle blast, and you're on the target line or the shooting line, I want you to relax, take your arrow, the unknock your arrow, put it back in the quiver, bow back on the rack, and get back behind the shooting line. The blast is going to sound something like this. Any questions about the range safety rules? Okay, and then you want to orient your students to the rack. Right here, what I do with my left hand bow is I put a piece of blue tape on it. When you order a set, you can color code it. You can say, uh, you know, uh, your, your left hand bow is wrong, blue, and pink, and then red is white. There's some fashion like that. I delineate or designate it with blue tape. Okay, so you want to orient your students to the bows. And then next, you're going to go, and I'm talking to you like an instructor, but uh, at this point, you're going to be talking to the students. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to demonstrate the first shot. You're going to take them from behind the weighted line all the way to air retrieval back on the line. Okay? So it goes something like this. First whistle command is what? Get bow. The archer's going to grab your bow. As an instructor, I'm right handed. I'm going to teach from the left side of the range. That way, y'all can see everything. Okay? So if there's a left handed archer, coach, where would you start out? Okay. For the most part, you're starting out on this side of the line. Archer will straddle the line, and this is what we call bows on your toes. So before we go any further, all the archers need to be on the line with the bow on the toe. And we'll talk about nomenclature, but this bow is uh, not upside down. The can, the oblong wheel at the bottom, and your eye wheel right here is perfectly round. You bow on your toe. Okay? Once we get here, the next command is shoot. One whistle flat. Now, at this point, you want to kind of, you've already trained your students in the 11 steps to your success, but you want to kind of roll through them so that you have an idea. Most of that's been done with the strong bow, okay? So, you have a whistle command to shoot. First thing I do, get my stance. Knock an arrow. Now, we'll talk a little bit about knock on here. Uh, and you don't have to do this while you demonstrate the shot. You can actually show them, get them in a group, show them how to knock. But basically what you have here is a knock locator. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock the arrow just below the knock locator and set the arrow on the arrow rest. Okay? With the odd colored vein or fletching towards me. Okay? Or out, away from the bow. Um, and there's a reason for that. But the odd color is called the index band. That's successful for index bang or index fletch. Okay? So when you're knocking the arrow, what we want you to do is grab it just below the fletching. Okay, you got archers on either side of you in most cases. So don't swing to it, don't swing the arrow around. All you have to do is bring it straight up, point it down range, come over the top, index fletch towards me, sit on the arrow. Just below the knock locator, knock, just below the knock locator, sit on the arrow. Okay? That's knocking the arrow. So if you stand, it's knock, draw hand set. Three fingers just below the air. Bow hand set, 45, 30, 45 degree angle, with a lock line of hand. Pre draw, I'm drawing. Anchor in the corner of my mouth, I'm aiming. Got my shot set up, slice screw somewhere. See my follow through? See how my bow trailed off to the left? Follow through and flip. Feel like a pretty good shot to me, okay? Next air. Practice, guys. Practice. That's why he's hitting the bullseye. Pre-draw. Draw. I'm angry. I'm aiming. Shot 
I said I was like, squeeze the rear. <laughs> see my follow through? Pretty well. I see that? That's what you're coaching, guys. That's what you want to see. All right. Again, oh my God, what do I do now? Huh? Nothing. No, no, no. I'm sorry? No, no, no. Huh? No, no, no. Right. At this point, guys, if your archer drops an arrow, you're going to reward a good hit. Okay? Obviously, there's other archers shooting. Okay? Why would this be a one? That's kind of obvious. <laughs> At this point, if that archer steps before that line, which you do as a coach, I whistle to everybody should relax. I'm not back on the boat rest and back on the way home. Okay? What you can do, the, the, the rules of the range is this archer at this point will raise his hand, raise his or her hand. And you as a coach will reward that archer with an additional arrow. Okay? No archer at any time is to pick up any arrows on the floor that is your job. Whether the shooting line is clear or not, they are not to pick up any arrows. And we'll talk about that a little bit more, but uh, for the simple reason that it's now a trip hazard and fall hazard. Kid leans over to the arrow, falls on it, gouges his eye, all out, something like that. And at no time these kids pick up arrows all the time. Alright, so I've shot the remainder of my quiver. There's no whistle command. Once my quiver's done, I put my throat back on the rack. Right. I'm back on the right. Once everybody's done, the next command is go get arrows. Three, three, three. Go get arrows. Three whistle blasts. It's going to sound like this. <laughs> this time, everybody following in. Use the instructor to pick the arrow up now or pick it up on the way back. No watchers are allowed to touch that arrow. I usually pick them on the way back. Use the instructor to be the first one down and the last one back. When you come down here, all archers will stop at the target line. So you tell them when you pull. When you come down here, you're going you're gonna to basically inspect for safety. Make sure there's, you know, I've seen arrows that, that hit the arrow curtain and come back right in. You might not necessarily see that if you're walking straight at it, right? You bend over and get the arrows and then your eyeballs gouge out. I like to use that. Yeah. Um, so here's the instructor. Before you move them forward on the target, from the, uh, from the target line, you're going to ensure that they're in the same environment. Okay. At this point, it's just a verbal command. Retrieve arrows. Get your arrows, guys. Um, if they're scoring before the archer that's shooting, usually we have two people per lane. That's how I roll. Uh, the scorer will come forward. He'll score before any arrows are touched. Okay? And then he'll walk away. The archer that's retrieving arrows, the ones that just shot the arrows, then he can move forward. Him or her can move forward and retrieve the arrows. Now, if you're looking at I'm going to show you the proper way of retrieving, but I want to show you the ring count on these arrows. Again, 80 centimeter feet of targets. Okay, international target style. Or in the Olympic style archery targets. This first ring, there's a little uh, uh, little uh, ring on the inside. That ring is nothing. That's just a, a bullseye ring. That This ring right here is the one ring. So anything inside this is one point. We use that little ring as a bullseye. It's kind of a tiebreaker. Now you might have a bunch of people hitting that ring or with the same score, but who had the most bullseyes? That's how we you know, delineate who has the best score. So that's your one ring, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Anything outside the ten ring is a zero. Okay. And there's several little games you can play with this too. I'll, I'll talk about them later. But uh, one of them's a, a team game. You say you got uh, half your archers on the Red team, half on the blue team. Okay, blue team, you're going to hit all blue. Red team, you got to hit all red. Uh, you might say, oh, I got five arrows, I want one arrow in each color. So you want to hit a white, a black, a blue. Um, and then you might say, and there's other games, and the best place to find these games is the, the NASP website. Yes, sir? So you said that the bullseye is a one point? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. It was just the opposite. It's I'm sorry, 10. 10. Okay, yeah, I, was yeah, I, was yeah, I thought that was like, uh, I know what he meant. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to score like golf. Yeah. Yeah. Low score. Yeah. Yeah. Or bad <laughs> shit, you can do it the other way. It's 20 for me. Another game being uh, no. your first arrow, whatever color your first arrow hits, I want all the arrows that color. So if I shoot yeah. green and oh. red, I try to drill with the red. Traditional arrow. Any questions on that? Now, pulling arrows again, the target line. 
two meters or yards away from the face of the target. Before they pull, you charge them to ensure that if there's a score right there, if there's spectators right there, they ensure that nobody's behind them because you can pull and gouge them up on But to, to draw, to take these arrows out, I'm a right-handed archer. Uh, and I'm really right-handed. I can't hold it or anything while that's in. So I put my left knee against the target. My left palm, I make a V. You want to work top down, in, inside out. So up against the Hand to hand right here. Pull and I sit down. In. See, that's, you can see how that would be difficult for a kid to pull. Sit down. Once I get all my arrows up, I'm going to marry them up on the top of the, uh, the target. I'm going to cover the tip, grab just below the vein, and I'm going to walk back. I'm going to set these arrows right back in the quiver again in no time run. And we have the kids cover the tip for obvious reasons. Okay, if they're not covered, they'll swing them around and you can gouge an eyeball out. Okay? So, at this point, the instructor will grab that arrow, put it back in that door. Again, guys, you are, as the instructor, you're the last one to leave. Once the kids get their arrows, they, they're free to go back, put their arrows in the quiver, back behind the waiting line. You're going to be the last one to leave. You're going to ensure that all the arrows up, there's no more kids back here that can get shot with the next volley of fire. Okay? Targets are, are, you know, after the pillow, you'll see kids that leave targets like this. Straighten the targets up. Make sure all the arrows up, everything's safe. Grab that arrow that was down early. Put it back in the quiver. Everybody back behind the waiting line. And we're ready to fire. Really. Any questions on demonstrating how to run the range? Think you can do that? Is there any, like, is there any, like, a special consideration you give for left-handers yeah, that just come, to, come over here? That's a good, that's a good question. Um, used to, and when we when the mass started, they tried to segregate left-handers, and they would put them at one end of the other the range, and that just what it boiled down to. Not that it didn't work out, but the segregation itself is kind of a, a touchy feely subject. And they started feeling, you know, there's going to be less left-handers in the so uh, you don't want to, you don't want to make anybody feel special. So, as of right now, left handers can go anywhere on the fire line. Again, I accommodate for that in that I put the forefoot right in the center of the target. There's plenty of room on either side. You can, left it. You can have a left here and a right here, and they can shoot back and back. Okay? What's important about that is when they, they knock, they're not swinging. Any questions on that? We'll have to demonstrate and show. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is called supervising the shot, okay? And this is nothing more than ensuring that your students can put safely in the middle of this bow, put an arrow on the top, okay? Or put an arrow somewhat down range, and you can adjust five from there. So what I want to do, I need five archers on this line right here. Who wants to get my first five? Oh, I got my five. All right. What you're doing now is supervising the shot guys. Uh, again, before all your all your students shoot, you're going to supervise their first shot. You're going to ensure that they can properly the place this bow safely. Okay. When we do this, the wizard points are the same. Now, this is the first shot, and you're only going to do this once. But I'm going to give the command, you're going to get to the, the shooting line, okay? Bows on toes. I'm going to give the command to shoot. However, not all archers will shoot. The only archer that will shoot will be the archer that I'm at. I'm going to work from left to right on this range, okay? So when I get the command to shoot, only the archer that I'm at will go through the level steps and put it right on that range, okay? When I feel like he's Go through the you're just looking for safety, you're not looking for accuracy at this point. No, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Two whistle blocks.
one. I see a safety hand on my hand. I'm not going to be emergency for some plans. I'm not sure you want to know. I feel like you say it's going to be a big problem. Okay. Now, while I'm here as a coach, and we're going to talk about coaching positions in the next block, but as I'm here, I can straddle the line with the archer, but I can see everything I need to see from this position. We'll talk about different coaching positions, but go ahead and go through the 11 steps. talk about, I probably should have went over before we're going to cover the next block, but uh, when you're coaching NASP likes to do CPR, uh, which is compliment, positive critique, and then a review. And uh, so I'm coaching, I'm coaching those 11 steps. What I saw was a release with no shot set up, okay, there's no follow to it, okay. So I compliment you by saying, your stance was great. Next time, positive critique, okay, positive critique, not what they're doing wrong, but what you want them to do, okay? So, next time you think about what you want on your shots to say. Same way. And then lastly, the review part of it, we'll cover it again. The review is, I don't want to tell this archer what to do, give them the critique, and then walk away and move on to the next one. That's just kind of telling that archer, hey, well, maybe not care enough about me to see if I'm doing this right again. So your view is, again, watching this next shot. So. the back of your hand, a string should flow right through your fingers, okay? You're not punching, you're not jerking, just relax. Okay. Yeah, try to memorize your 11 steps, folks. Let me get up here. You should be touching the corner of your mouth. Stance look good. You got your anchor good. I want you to work on your shot. Well, you're teaching. Do you want the kids to go back to the stance and the 11 steps? Well, here, 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 or they just don't remain their stance? No, that's fine. That's fine. And they should know all these steps. You're just coaching specific steps okay. in here at this point.
That means you get out your uh, equipment and you practice before you have to yeah. teach. <laughs> yes. For you to right. get on the cue to get the arrows. Yeah. Yeah. Go. go get arrows. Because that can be kind of confusing. Right. Go get the arrows and just run. Sorry, Mark. Okay. Yeah. You as an instructor going down there first, inspect the safety. And then it's just a verbal command in there. Okay. okay. Put your whole foot against it, Garrett. Turn your whole foot sideways and put it. Put your hip up against it. But yeah, there you go. Now you're going to have some more support. Okay. Even them up on top. Okay. Put your hand, put your other hand against it. Remember, no, remember the triangle. Remember the make it. I think you forgot that part. Okay. And kind of uh, turn it. Okay. Um, I want to do that so when I talk about supervising the first shot and coach you all through it, you understand what that means. So, coaching techniques. Set up, I can see that follow through, I can see that, that rear hand on or near her shoulder. Okay? Everybody got that? <laughs> Next one is behind the archer's elbow, again, two to three feet. Now, several things I can see from here. I can see her stance, her red posture, I can see her follow through, um, and I can see shot set up. Okay? Big thing right there is that slight movement of that elbow. You can really see that from this position. 
Next position is behind the archer's back. Again, stance, uh, vertical posture, follow through, the follow through and reflect the release. Um, in shot setup, I can see the, the uh, back muscle activation to ensure that she's having a good shot setup. Lastly, it's called well behind the archer's elbow. So I got face to face, behind the archer's elbow, behind the archer's back, now I'm well behind the archer's elbow. This is about eight to 10 feet right here, guys. And what I'm looking at, you can see a lot of the, the same things. But most importantly from this position is I can see air flow. Now why is that? When I talk about archery, you're really talking consistency. In every step, you're looking at consistency. Stance is the same. The knock is the same. The anchor points the same. Well, that translates to air flow as well. So when you watch an air, you don't watch your air come on. It's, it's doing this. And I kind of, I don't know if everybody, anybody, you probably Google it and see it. So, since it's an archery, that arrow will kick off, let's just say, to the right. Okay? Now, if you're watching arrow fly from back here, and one arrow kicks off to the right, next arrow kicks off to the left, that's inconsistency. Okay? There's something wrong with what that archery is doing. Something inconsistent about her dynamic. So, arrow fly, that's what you're looking for back here. Any questions on that? You're going to need to know those positions. What you can coach from each position. I think so. Come that you can see from each position. Now, range of distance. And y'all are educators, you know, you know, every time I teach you something.